collection of cars here for such a new venue is pretty vast. I was actually surprised how many cars are in this building. Um, there are, of course, some very special cars, some with special stories, and as you wander around the museum there are boards um, with QR codes and you can get um, an audio device uh, provided here where you can basically scan that code and it'll basically tell you about the vehicle, which is a really nice touch. Um, there's also a really old uh, interesting barn find vehicle I've seen in here, but to be honest the stuff that really really interests me um, are the, basically the cars from my past, the cars I remember from my childhood. Uh, one of them, like this Rover SD3 here be behind me, uh, SD3 200 series, my grandfather had two of those, um, of course they are most well remembered for uh, being the car of Richard and Hyacinth Bouquet. Um, in the TV sitcom Keep Up Appearances. Um, of course, the, this was one of the many cars from the tie-up with Honda, uh, starting with cars like the Triumph Acclaim that we've got just hiding around there as well, uh, and went through the Rover R8, R3 and HHR models, um, along with various um, other models like the 600 and 800, uh, which were the Accord and Legend um, Hondas. Another car that my grandfather owned was the Rover R8, of which he had two. Um, he had a J-Registration 214 GSI, which was uh, top of the range in terms of trim. Um, and then he later swapped that to a 216 SLI on a K-Registration. Now this car behind me is in fact on the K-Registration, but this has got the, uh, the early um, indicator lamps. Um, in 93 they did actually swap those to ones that wrapped around further uh, but initially on the 200s they retained the flat nose as opposed to the Rover grille um, which was put on the 400s but shortly after onto the 200 because owners all wanted them fit into their car. Of course cars don't come much more iconic than the DeLorean DMC 12. The uh, factory for which was built in Northern Ireland, such an incredible car, uh, stainless steel body panels um, fitted onto the vehicle, these gullwing doors, really iconic car. In many ways they said they were actually quite terrible. Um, poor reliability. Uh, they used a V6 uh, Renault engine that was also found in uh, a few Volvos of the era as well. The car, um, well, let's just say DeLorean Motor Company, we, most of us know the story about it, but it was very short-lived. Um, but the car did get a bit of a resurgence uh, in the mid-80s thanks to the Back to the Future film franchise. And uh, these cars have now become incredibly pop popular. Um, and values have uh, increased dramatically on them. Another car I've longed to own for quite a while now is a Lotus Esprit. Um, Esprit such as this one here, this is one of the uh, Peter Stevens designed cars. Uh, they're a little bit more rounded off um, from the early cars but uh, again you've still got that 70s wedge um, inspired with a mid-engine layout. Fantastic car and even by modern standards these allegedly drive absolutely superb. Now the Esprit of course did have a glass fibre construction which meant it was incredibly light but it was also big enough that it could cut it against other mid-engine sports GT cars. Um, though unlike say a Ferrari or a Lamborghini with a V12 engine, uh, typically in these cars it was a four cylinder engine either normally aspirated um, or the majority were turbocharged. Towards the very end there were some Rover V8 powered cars as well. My personal favourite though is probably this SD1, I think it looks fantastic in this colour. It's a Series 2 V8 Vitesse as well, so it's the one that you want. Um, obviously twin plenum version of these cars towards the end of the run uh, are now incredibly sought after. But it doesn't matter whether you want a Mini or a Metro or an MG. Uh, there seems to be something here for everybody. Ford fans won't be disappointed either with things like this Mark 1 Fiesta XR2. A real staple of Britain throughout the 1980s there would have been cars like these two here, the Mark II Cavalier and the Ford Sierra. Um, my preference would be the Ford Sierra. I, I'm not really a huge Ford fan but I have always liked the Sierra. I do uh, like the sort of wraparound dashboard design in these cars. Um, the Cortina which it replaced was incredibly popular and when this jelly mould shape first came out buyers weren't entirely convinced. Um, very futuristic looking, very aerodynamic but uh, the underpinnings were very much traditional with a front engine and a rear wheel drive. Um, that said the cars went on to be incredibly popular, had a few revisions over the years and sold incredibly well. Cars like these two would have been on a lot of people's company car lists. Um, if you were a sales rep, it was, it was quite a good chance that you would have maybe driven one of these or perhaps something like a Montego. 
We've also got back there things like the uh, Mark III Ford Escort and uh, rivals like the Mark I and Mark II Vauxhall Astra, all of which were incredibly popular cars you used to see all the time on Britain's roads. But when was the last time you actually saw one of those? You just never see these cars anymore, at least not in these generations. Right, I've been at the uh, Great British Car Journey today. Um, I've been to Drive Dad's car and enjoyed driving some of the cars. And while I'm here, I've had a look around the museum as well, a fantastic collection of cars. Um, Ian's been looking after me today. Ian is the car club coordinator here. Uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about some of the things that are coming up at this venue. Yeah, so we've only just launched the um, car club here at the Great British Car Journey. Um, we've actually just ticked over to 200 members today as well, which is good news for the venue, good news for uh, myself personally putting a lot into it. Um, what we're hoping to do with the car club is we have obviously got a lot of people in the local area and beyond that are really keen to sort of support us in the fact that you know, we've got all this large collection of classic cars and we're looking after them and there's a new home for them. And people have been really supportive around that. Um, so the 200 members are going to get exclusive access on members' evenings where we're going to be opening up the bonnets of a lot of the cars. We'll get the mechanic involved to talk about sort of the, the history of the vehicles, etc. Um, and then we're going to do things that we've seen other people doing well. So we're going to be hosting our own breakfast club once a month. We're going to have some uh, drive-outs. Um, local to start within sort of the Derbyshire area uh, and get people involved in that respect so everyone will be able to come down share their love for their pride and joy outside the venue and then off we'll go on a, a run out hopefully as well there'll be a, a quiz night maybe and then also we're looking at um Christmas, Christmas do as well, so plenty on the calendar. For what and all, all these are exclusive to club members? That's right, yeah. Yeah, so whilst we will be telling club members about the other visits that will be happening throughout the year, so if a large car club is coming along, um, we're sure the members are going to have interest to know that a national TVR day is going to be happening here where we've got 100 TVRs in the car park all at once. So they'll serve to let members know that these events are happening, but the exclusive ones will be for members only who are supporting us just through a small membership payment a year, which gives them 12 months access to the venue. Um, it's like a, just an annual ticket, really, with some extra added benefits as well. Excellent, that's fantastic. Uh, well, I've certainly enjoyed my time here today. I'm sure anyone else will. Um, I'll leave the link to the website uh, on the description of this video. Do you have any other sort of social media pages or anything? I'd say the best thing to do is follow us on the Facebook page and also Instagram. But if you uh, look for Great British Car Journey, you will find us on those on those channels there. Well, that's excellent. Thanks very much, and I've I've really enjoyed today. Yeah, so yeah, thanks for coming down. Yeah, excellent, and. Uh, that's a, that's another one up from me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, by all means, do come and take a look at this fantastic venue. Uh, and if you have the means, please do come and drive some of the cars. You really will enjoy it. Uh, until next time from me, it's goodbye.